Now that you're familiar with solving quantitative energy problems, we can now look at some that are a little bit more complicated. And they're going to be a little more complicated in that they're going to have multiple steps. So let's look at this first example. We've got an amount of energy we're looking for that must be absorbed by a 150 gram sample of ice at zero degrees Celsius that melts and then warms to 25 degrees Celsius. So before we can solve this problem, let's sketch out the curve to see what's really going on. So there's my axis. We're gonna start at zero degrees Celsius in ice. We're gonna melt and then go up to 25. So we're gonna melt first and then go up to 25. So there's zero and then there's 25. So what we wind up with is phase energy and thermal energy both. So we're gonna have two calculations that we're gonna find. I'm gonna call these A and B. And then in order to find the energy that we've got all together, we'll add our final answers at the end. Okay, so if we've got ice that's melting, we want to look at the heat of fusion to start out with. So we're going to have 334 joules per gram, one gram, and set that equal to x joules over 150 grams. We can find our joules by taking 334 joules per one gram times 150 grams. That's gonna make it so that the grams will cancel and we'll be left with joules. Okay. We find this, do the math, we get 501,000 joules. Okay, 50,100. That's just for the phase change of the ice melting and turning into a liquid. So with our second, we're looking at our phase energy. Now our water is gonna be in the liquid form, so we're gonna to wanna to use a specific heat of water. So I'm gonna set 4.18 joules for every one gram, raises one degree Celsius. And here we're looking for the number of joules it takes for 150 grams to go from zero to 25. So we can find our change in temperature by taking our final temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, our initial temperature of zero degrees Celsius, obviously that's gonna be 25. Okay. So we're gonna raise it 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Finding our number of tools. Oops. We can take X joules, times 4.18 joules for one gram times one degree Celsius times 150 grams and 25 degrees Celsius. And that makes the unit of the gram cancel, the degree Celsius cancel, and that turns out to be 100, no, 15,000 675 joules. To get the total energy, we're going to add these two together. So this is going to be our phase energy plus our thermal energy. Okay. So we're going to add these two. Just highlight both of these. I'm running out of space a little bit. Okay, add those two together, and we wind up with six, five, seven, seven, five joules. That's kind of a lot of sig big, so maybe we want to round that down to two based on our numbers and our problem. So let's make that 66,000 joules. And when you solve these problems, you want to use this same thought process. Okay. Sketch 
a heating or cooling curve based on what's happening, figure out whether you're looking at phase energy, thermal energy, solve for each of those processes, and then add your total together. So if we go ahead and look at our second example, suppose that in our icy hot lab, the burner transfers 325 kilojoules of energy to 450 grams of liquid water at 25, we want to know what mass of water would be boiled away. So if I start by sketching my curve, we've got to take into consideration what's really happening. So we've got 20 degrees up to boiling, which is going to be 100 degrees. Here we've got thermal and we've got phase energy. Okay. So we want to know the mass is going to be boiled away. So we're going to start with 450 grams of water. We're going to raise that temperature from 20 degrees to 100 degrees. So we can find our change in temperature. Okay, Final is going to be 100 degrees minus our initial 20 degrees for a change of 80 degrees. So if I solve for my first energy, okay, this is liquid water, so we're going to use 4.18 joules for 1 gram times 1 degree Celsius. Set that equal to some number of joules for 450 grams times a change of 80 degrees Celsius. Okay. So here x joules is going to equal our specific heat of water, 4.18 joules for every 1 gram raising 1 degree Celsius times 450 grams times 80 degrees Celsius. Okay. That's going to give us 150,624 joules. This is how much energy it takes to change the temperature. So the next thing we want to do is figure out how much energy we're going to have left for the boiling. So we're going to take our 325 kilojoules of energy we know we have a thousand joules for every one kilojoule, so that's going to give me 325,000 joules. And we're going to subtract the 150,624 joules that it takes to raise the temperature, and that means we're going to have 1,007 or 174,376 joules left for our phase change. So this time we're going to look for the mass. So this is vaporization. So we want to use our heat of vaporization. So that's going to be 2,260 joules per gram. We're looking for the grams, and we're going to use that 174376 joules that we have left over to figure out the mass that's going to be vaporized. So now to find our grams, we're going to Cross multiply and then divide to solve for x. 174376 joules divided by the 2260 joules per 1 gram. That lets our joules unit cancel and we'll be left with grams, which, if we want to round to, well, let's look, three sig figs, let's make that. 77.2 
grams of water that get vaporized.